gonna need your guns. What? I'll hold on to mine. You're not getting inside with that in your hip. Am I the only one here who's clear on the concept of law enforcement? Damn right, Lou. Lou Salverson, Minnesota State. Up from Laverne. Yeah, they had some senselessness there a few days back. I'm afraid we're going to have to talk about. What kind of senselessness? Three dead, including a state judge. A Judge Munt? Uh-oh. Everything OK here, Mark? Not sure yet. Ma'am, we found the murder weapon at the scene. Prince came back this morning. And? We're going to have to talk to Rye. That's not going to happen. You need to leave. Mrs. Gerhardt, if either of these men draw, I'm going to be forced to shoot some people, and I don't want to do that. Now, your son's wanted in connection with three murders. And I'm guessing that's not the first time you heard somebody say that. So however it is you want to handle this, you need to handle it now, or it'll get handled for you. No. Go easy. Shit. Shit. You OK, Ma? Maud Schmidt's boy here is uh, trying to tell me your brother killed a judge. Oh, but he killed a judge? We own all the judges. What would be the point of killing one? Now, Dodd. Don't you dog me. We're not friends. Shit. We found Rai's prints on the gun. You're going to find my boot on your neck. You keep talking like that. Well, now, to be fair, I'm the one who found the gun, so I think you're dancing with the wrong girl. <laughs> Fuck it out. Lou has got big balls. They're like fucking coconuts. I says I'm the one who found the gun. So you should be talking to me. And I'm from out of town, so forgive me if I should be terrified. But in Minnesota, when a police officer says talk, you talk. You want to dance? Let's dance. Ben, you need to teach your friends some manners. How about Mike Milligan, out of Kansas City? You know where we can find him? Pretty sure he's looking for your brother, too. <gasps> oh! They did not know that. We're done here. <sighs> Tell you what, I've got myself quite a crush on Lou Solverson right now. Yes! Come on! I gotta get back. I talk to my boss. God, this fucking coward. Thanks for showing me around. Yeah. Pulls. Okay, Lou's a lot more generous than I am. We've already heard from Floyd that the Gerhardts have been a peacetime family since forever. So why is he so scared? Is it just like that still that reputation of Otto? And also, I haven't seen them go full dark yet. So maybe I'm also operating sort of in the absence of necessary information. Like, I might not be as afraid of the Gerhardts as I should be yet. That said, I still appreciate Lou being like, excuse me, who's wearing badge? I'm not playing around with this fucking servile bullshit. Well, Ben Schmidt's like, oh. I mean, as a, a police officer, you're walking around and you, you submit your gun and your bullets? Anyway, back to it. Play. What's he doing? <gasps> oh, shit! I didn't notice. The door was open. <gasps> oh, shit! Shit! What are you... Having a baby? Oh, no! Hello. You didn't tell me your family was in from out of town. Uh, whoops. Put the fucking gun down, you idiot. Not loaded. You wouldn't by any chance be Mike Milligan and the Kitchen Brothers, would you? Kitchen Brothers. Sounds like a band. You make us sound like a prog rock band. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> introducing Mike Milligan and the Kitchen Brothers. <laughs> the Kitchen Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck off. So, where'd you say you saw old Skip? At your mother's house. I think going in the back door. I like him. Ooh! 
I like you. But I better get going. Nice. Fuck off, Kitchen Brothers. No. You stay. We've seen everything there is to see. Shit. Pause. And if you're sitting there going, why is she freaking out? We now lose a life in in the future, so there's whatever. I'm stressed because A, he had a serious limp in the future and he'd left the force because he'd seen some dark shit. So there is darkness. He is going to go through some shit. He's not, it's not going to kill him. But I love him. I don't want to see him in pain. And I know he's going to go through some deep, deep shit this season. Oh my God. This is fantastic. Play. Fuck off, Kitchen Brothers, with your stupid guns. I am not a crook. All right, Nixon. It's quite a good joke when you think about it, because both of them are. I get it. Irony. Pause. I'll tell you something now. This is going to be another two-episode day. I can already tell. I can already tell. I'm, I'm not going to be satisfied at the end of this episode. I'm going to have to go and watch another one. I love this show so much. God, thanks, thank you God that I watched season two. This is so much better. And I, I just say, I'm not shitting on season one. The reason season two, I think, is better is not just, it's like, it gave me characters that I really love and care about. But the pacing was all off and everything else. And it's like this one, I'm now, I'm already got my character investment. But, all of the other things that make a show great have been dialed up really high. So, yeah. Anyway, I, I'm going into the review. I, shut up, Karen. Play. Visitors from above. Some say they take the you aliens. to the ship and probe you in places you don't want to mention. I believe the purposes are more benevolent as the caretaker to the zoo. In fairness, we did see a UFO. Play. I mean, you've got to give it, if there actually are aliens making landings, they're doing it extraordinarily well. Because the only people that ever see them seem to be complete fruitcakes. I think they might actually have a little alien ray gun that's like the stupefier. And so if you happen to be a witness, to a UFO, they just zap you with it, and you become incapable of coherent speech. It's like the perfect ruse. Okay. Dad's here. Oh. Hank. Mm. Mm. Uh, that's a pause. Can we just take a moment to appreciate Patrick Wilson, who I have absolutely fallen in love with in this episode? He is absolutely gorgeous. Play. Milligan. And, um, what do you have? The Bathroom Brothers? Yeah. The Bathroom the Brothers. <laughs> we pointed our weapons at each other for a bit before calling it a day. You're playing cribbage or uh, hold your horses there? Yeah. You, you know who's cheating. Who's cheating, Dad? <laughs> huh? They're so cute. Get back in the goddamn truck. What are you talking about? I got him. Shit. Up that coat. You're embarrassing me. Oh, fuck you, dog. You want to hit me again? Is that getting you hard? Uh, uh, uh. Oh! Oh! Shit. Sir, this is a huge... Shut up. We know about the judge and the typewriters and the taxes, and we know you were putting ideas into his head. And all I want to hear out of your mouth right now is where he is. Who? Tell him, why would I go by Rai's place yelling his name if I knew where he was? In the hole. Oh, fuck. What? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh! 
no, no, no! Oh, no, no, no! Get it back! What you say? Oh, shit. Came right yesterday, looking for Rye. Probably they found him. I'm just... Oh, shit. I could call, make a deal. I got capital. You don't know anything. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God, he's Hawk Tar. Is that Tormac? Shit. They do not fuck about you. down to that shithole Minnesota town, and you're going to bring my brother back tonight. Judge or no judge, if Kansas City gets in your way, if the cops get in your way, if anybody gets in your way, you kill them dead. Fuck me. Absolutely brilliant. So, to recap, this whole episode is like moving players into position, and I'm deeply appreciating just the confusion and the mix up and the complete randomness. I think the you know, having the myth of Sisyphus of the, of the title is brilliant for this. Because this is freaking chaos. No one knows what the fuck they're doing. Everyone's trying to get in control of the circumstances. And I'm failing. To, to a greater or a lesser degree. It's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love the... The showdown at the ranch with um, with Lou versus the Gerhards was like life itself. It just gave me life. I love his courage. And it wasn't um, witless courage either. He was aware that... I think he was aware of the, the kind of danger he was walking into on some level. I don't think he gets quite how scary these people are but you know he's not that as well you know he is aware of the mafia he is aware of their role in the town you know ben schmidt has, has warned him in advance in no uncertain terms about just how dangerous and unpalatable any sort of confrontation with the gearhearts is so he went into that knowing and he was just like fuck it i'm not and that's what I mean about him trying to bring order to chaos. Is like everyone else is like, you know, freak. You know, Ben Schmidt is just like handing over, and and Lou is like trying to enforce the law, and the the established order, which is the you know the most senior person in any room is law enforcement. Always, at least for the normal people. So I, I really liked that. And it was just so tense. I kept stopping breathing. Like my heart was going. I had proper chills. Brilliant. And he has fully pissed them off. So I... You know, Floyd's face... Was an absolute picture. And just we have the crossover with, you know, Skip Spring. Just, oh my God, that guy. Just bouncing about like a rude pinball. Hilarious. And he's just, one minute he's getting confronted by Mike Milligan and the Kitchen Brothers. The next minute he's got the police on his door. I mean, it's just, God, 
I mean, I'm not saying he deserved much better because he's clearly, this is a guy that does not make good decisions, I think, as a rule. So it's not like I expected much in store in life for Skip Spring. But I think getting thrown into a grave and then buried in what looked like, we call it tarmac here, in your tar road. It's like a road surface. So it's really, really hot, tarry grit or gravel and it that would burn oh god i can't even think about it a horrible way to go and in all the course of this what is now happening is that thanks to skip spring we now have a situation which could trigger a hot war between the gerhards and their crews around around fargo like the fargo syndicate and the Kansas City people, the Kansas City syndicate, I guess, because we had this, the whole setup at the beginning of like the allies saying that we're not going straight to war, but if they fuck with us, you know, fuck them. It's game over. We are like on it, like white on rice. They now have a pretext which we knew would happen. I honestly thought it was going to be a setup. There was going to be a Reich tag fire situation where, you know, Dodd, picked, Dodd deliberately set something up to trigger the war. That's what, what I suspected would happen. But even better than that, it's like a comedy of errors. You know, from, from Skip's view, it makes complete sense. From their view, it makes complete sense. But they don't know the... Roy's been just hit by a car randomly by Peggy passing by. Fantastic. So we're about to go to war based on a series of disconnected random events and people's paranoia and suspicions. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. A great character study. Really, really good. Obviously, I loved it. Um, I think I'm going to export the file and then I'm going to go on and watch episode four because this is this is really good. And I'd like to see, I really want to see the fallout from that. So until the next time. Bye bye.